So if you have a 3D, you need to write out the wave function. Uh, let me just say, uh, we'll do a really easy one first. Let's say I want to do this for 1S orbital. Okay, or we could get harder if you prefer. So you would say psi of 1S, there's two parts of any 3D, it's the radial part, 1S, times the angular part, 1S. Okay? You're like, okay, what's that function? This is where you go to table 8-1. Okay, so if you have table 8-1, follow along. If not, you just have to trust me. So what I'm going to do, I'll write out, this is, I'm exactly copied from the table right now. So the radial part, you'll just look at, and it says in this in the table, radial, the 1s wave function, 2 times z over a naught to the 3 halves e to the minus sigma over 2. I'm copying it straight from the table. Then the y1 is also in the table. It looks like this. It doesn't list the n. It only lists the l values. And that's 1 over 4 pi to the 1 half. Wait, but since 1s is the, the shape of it is a circle, so don't you just draw the circle? Okay, exactly. You're getting to the genius part of this. So, uh, let me write this first. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to put these next to each other and write a multiplication sign in the middle. Okay? Uh, 2, z over a, and I'll tell you what all the constants mean. 3 halves, e to minus, a, uh, sigma over 2. This is the function. Okay? But assuming I copied it right, that's the wave function. Now, the, gene, the hard part is, well, if you put this in your calculator, you have to put it in your calculator, for, have your calculator draw it, and figure out what the heck it is. The genius part is, oh, 1s, if you remember today, I told you s looks like a sphere. Sphere, yeah. So, 1s, there we go, done. You can either put this in your calculator, or know that s looks like a sphere. How many nodes? Zero, because it's n minus one, and here's the n is one. So no nodes, that's it. Okay? What's the line in the This here? Uh -huh. Just to make it more three-dimensional oh, looking, more pretty. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. You could just draw it as a circle if you prefer. What's under the z? Is that a? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Well, let me tell you what these variables are. Okay. There's a, I'll just go from here, a z. Z is the uh, atomic number. So if you look at your periodic table, H is 1. Z is 1 for H. Helium is 2. Lithium is 3, etc. Okay. A naught. That's called the Bohr radius. And I believe it's something like 53 or 54 picometers. I never use it, so it's me. I just always leave it in there. I think you'll see even when you do your homework online, uh, we don't even plug it in. It's just, just leave it as A naught. But uh, yeah, it's a number. It's a small number. Uh, what else? Sigma? Right there. Sigma, it tells you right in your table 8-1 what sigma is. So if you look in your table, it says the following. So right now I'm just copying. Okay. 2, Z, R over n a naught. Well, those are variables I already explained. 2 is 2. Z, that's the atomic number. R, there's the radius. There's r, theta, and phi. So it's one of the three variables. n, that's n, printable qu principal quantum number. In this case, what's n in this problem? 1, because it's 1s. And then a naught, that's the Bohr radius again. Is that a constant, or is it given in the table for that specific equation? A naught, you mean? No. Um, oh, sigma? Yeah. Sigma is a constant for everything in this table. Sigma is always that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if we know that 
one S or S is a sphere shape, then why would we need to put in all that function stuff if we're... Oh, okay, why do you have to do this mess if yeah. you already know it's a sphere? Yeah. Well, there's a couple things. That's why we know it's a sphere. It's because somebody graphed it. Okay. Okay, some really nerdy person graphed it, got a sphere, and told us that the S's look like spheres. Okay. The other factor is, if you want to do advanced math on this, uh -huh. um, so the electron is found in here. That's, that's just where it is. So it's not the orbits that we did earlier, the Bohr thing. This is actually what it looks like. Well, it's not equally distributed in here. It's actually more found towards the center than it is at the edges. So because of that, you could use this to figure out uh, like a probability density. Where is it most dense in the sphere? We're not really going to do that. So for us, it's just a matter of writing this down. Ability to copy scary looking things onto a piece of paper is the most that we're going to use it for. But you'll see a little bit where I'll talk about probability density within. Yeah? Does it matter if it's ionized? Since you use atomic um, energy? Yeah, it does matter. I don't know. If you're talking about Z, yeah. yes. Uh, whatever element you use, or you'll see if we give you an element, that element has to have an atomic, or has to have a one electron system. So, if you chose, for example, tungsten number 74, that means it has how many electrons? 74. 74. So if we were, wanted to do this for tungsten, I'd have to say tungsten 73 plus to get rid of all those electrons so there's just one left. Or if I did this for helium, we'd have to do it for helium plus because all this math I'm showing you works for one electron and one only. If you add even one more electron to the system, the math is different. So, uh, it's not as nice looking. If, whether or not you think it's nice, it's not as nice as this. So, everything has to be charged such that it uh, has one electron.